Right. Um, good evening. Good evening, everybody. Um, so welcome to this uh, webinar for uh, the MRS uh, here at St. Mary's University. So um, I'm going also to uh, record uh, the, uh, the webinar in this way. If you want to uh, go back to it uh, or uh, you want to listen again to the webinar, it will be uh, made available on the website of the, of the MRS. And if you want, there is also the recording of the webinar that we had in uh, February. Uh, each webinar is going to be a bit different. So the one we had in February, uh, I covered um, uh, what the MRS is, what you're going uh, to study, and so on and so forth. Um, the webinar we are going to have uh, today uh, is more about um, the type of research uh, that as part of the MRS uh, you will uh, undertake. Uh, so I asked uh, um, some of the supervisors to uh, talk about themselves. Um, so the webinar is more about uh, uh, the supervisor. Uh, I mean, they obviously they gave me either slides or they gave me a video, but you can really um, uh, hear a bit more about uh, what kind of research uh, they can offer and so what type of project you might um, uh, you know, um, do with them if you so wish, obviously. But let us start and let me uh, share my screen with you. In this way, we can uh, have a look uh, at the, uh, let me just put it here in the corner. So let us start. Um, first of all, let, us me, let, let me uh, introduce you uh, the teaching team. Uh, and then uh, I will introduce the, the supervisors. And then obviously, uh, if you have uh, um, any question, I will uh, be happy to take questions um, at the end, or if you want to interrupt at any time, by all means do so. So this is me, I'm Elisabetta. Uh, so I'm the course lead of, uh, of the MRES. Uh, so uh, my background is uh, in biophysics and biomechanics. Uh, so I'm, I'm a physicist by background, uh, but I, my expertise is primarily in um, biomechanics at the cellular level, so cell biomechanics primarily. Uh, and uh, the, my research is uh, um, oriented, if you like, to healthcare. So I uh, work mainly uh, with uh, um, healthcare uh, practitioners. Um, and uh, uh, the type of projects I usually offer are projects which are more uh, health related uh, and even, if you like, uh, biomedicine related for people who are interested more in, if you like, applied health. And part of my research is also on, um, uh, on sport bioengineering, for example, uh, which means uh, um, the different, uh, um, for example, prosthetics uh, or prosthetic, sorry, or uh, orthosis, which can be used uh, to help people who are suffering from injuries or even from strokes. Um, part of my research is in stroke bioengineering and uh, the well, rehabilitation by engineering, uh, how you know you can help someone uh, who is recovering from from a stroke uh, to either walk again uh, properly uh, or um, to uh, you know to kind of uh, gain again that mobility that, for example, someone uh, who has suffered from a stroke has lost. But also uh, people who have lost a limb, for example. So how. Uh, it's possible to help them uh, to gain uh, their mobility, gain back the mobility, how to get used to the prosthetic and so on and so forth. Uh, another uh, member is uh, Kiriaki Mirissa. Uh, Kiriaki is, uh, she's a, a module convener, uh, as uh, most module convener uh, on the MRS. Uh, Kiriaki is also the subject lead for the postgraduate uh, programs. She is a senior lecturer in nutrition and health and exercise um, science. And uh, Kiriaki's, Kiriaki's research focuses primarily on, uh, on appetite and body weight uh, control, and also how uh, weight loss can be predicted. So the predictors of weight loss and also how uh, weight loss can be 
maintained. Um, and uh, um, she um, has quite a lot of experience uh, in working on a nutritional project using a uh, primarily advanced uh, con uh, quantitative um, method. And in fact, the, the module uh, Kiriaki is uh, convening and also teaching on uh, is the, the advanced research met methods. Uh, then uh, we have Jamie North. Uh, Jamie is uh, uh, the uh, Associate Dean for Research and Enterprise in the faculty. Uh, so uh, Jamie graduated uh, with uh, a Bachelor in Psychology. So uh, Jamie's background is in psychology, but then um, he um, started working uh, in sports psychology. Uh, so the four now is a uh, main uh, area of research is in sport psychology. And uh, um, Jamie is supervising uh, um, uh, projects in areas um, uh, like uh, perceptual cognitive skills, expert uh, performance and skill acquisition and motor lear learning. Uh, then we have, oops, sorry. Uh, John, John Partizan. John is a, a senior lecturer uh, in sports science and uh, uh, his, uh, his background is in physiology. So um, the type of research and also projects that John is, uh, is offering and can supervise are primarily physiology uh, related and in particular uh, the physiology which is uh, related to, uh, to sport, exercise and um, uh, physical activities. And then there is Lori, Lori Menini. Uh, Lori, um, so she's a lecturer in psychology um, so, and uh, she specializes in cognitive um, science. And uh, Lori's research uh, focuses on visual perception and visual motor uh, control. And she uses uh, psychophysical, um, psychooptical, optoelectronic, and functional neuroimaging techniques and um, also um, uh, instruments. And this includes also uh, retino retinotopic um, mapping uh, in order to. Uh, to investigate the visual processes in humans. And Lori is, uh, um, I mean, she has supervised quite a number of uh, MRS projects and she's supervising currently, um, I think one, if I'm not mistaken, uh, one or two um, MRS projects uh, with this current cohort. But let me now go on to uh, the supervisors. So what really I would like to, uh, to show you is uh, what the supervisors um, SMRs can offer you when it comes to your research projects. So let me start with Alex, um, Alexandra uh, Attack. Uh, Alex is a sports uh, biomechanist here in the faculty. And uh, um, she has a primary uh, focus. I mean, her research is primarily focused on three dimensional um, analysis of sports uh, techniques uh, in order to understand either the factors that contribute to successful performance or how to reduce the uh, risk of injury. Uh, Alex has been uh, involved uh, um, in uh, projects including uh, um, rugby and uh, oops, sorry, is, is uh, you don't see this one, uh, rugby um, and uh, cricket organizations, as well as uh, uh, international wearable uh, tech companies. Uh, Alex's research has primarily been focused on four. Um, main uh, sports, uh, which are rugby, cricket, football, and running. Uh, but also, she has been involved uh, in projects looking at vertical jumping, uh, tennis, netball, uh, parkour, and ballet. And some of the current projects uh, that uh, Alex is uh, um, working on and supervising and being involved with are the use of wearable technology in order to measure bio biomechanical characteristics of sporting movements, uh, the effect of maturation 
uh, on skill development in adolescent athletes, uh, the effect of fatigue on injury risk and the performance, and the role uh, of coordination variability in injury risk. And finally, the use of simulation modeling uh, to investigate, investigate the efficacy of proposed training uh, interventions. Um, now, so this is Alex, um, and uh, um, these are just uh, some selections. Let me put everything. So this is, oh, sorry, I can't, you can't see it properly, but this is, uh, here is her uh, email address is Alexandra dot attack at stmeris.ac.uk. But if you uh, Google her name, she will come up immediately. So this is just a selection of some of the data collection, uh, which uh, she has uh, conducted quite recently. Uh, so previously, a lot of uh, uh, the work that she has conducted has been lab-based using a uh, 3D motion capture. So this is the Bicon that we have here at St. Mary's, but also uh, force plate systems. And this is the force plate we have in the biomechanics lab here at St. Mary's in order to measure both the technique and the performance of various sports, such as um, rugby place kicking and the cricket throw throwing, um, uh, and cricket throwing, sorry. And uh, then they, you know, uh, Alex and her team has also uh, started to explore the possibility uh, of doing a similar testing outside on the field, not just inside the biomechanics lab, using inertia uh, measurement units. So this is what um, uh, she has done outside. This is our rugby pitch that we have here at St. Mary's, um, uh, and quite close to the, to the gym and all the sport, um, if you like, area. Uh, and buildings here at St. Mary's. Uh, and also uh, they, did, they performed these experiments using uh, also wearable, wearable technology. And finally, they have used this data to model uh, sport and movement. So this is the simulation, an example of simulation they made uh, uh, using a computer software and exploring how to both uh, improve performance and reduce uh, injury risk. And they did that through uh, simulating changes uh, to uh, the technique used by the athletes, but also physical uh, characteristics. So this is Alex. And as I said, if you think uh, this is something you would like to explore further, by all means, uh, feel free to contact Ale Alex. Um, and uh, this is uh, Brian, so uh, this is uh, um, a, uh, a video, I have it here, let me uh, play it for you. Thank you. 
Okay, so let me just go back here now. Sorry, here we go. Uh, so this was uh, Ryan, uh, and as Ryan said, if you are uh, interested uh, in knowing more about what he's doing, so this uh, this is uh, his contact. Um, and uh, <coughs> pardon me. Uh, if you Google his name, uh, you will certainly find uh, his web page where there is much more information. Um, the another uh, supervisor and uh, is Professor Alex Bliss. So this is Alex. Uh, Alex is supervising quite a number of, of our MRS uh, students also this year. I think he has three or four uh, working with him and his team. Uh, so Alex is uh, the associate professor in strength and conditioning. So the majority of, uh, of, the, uh, of the projects that Alex is supervising are in, in that area. 
So Alex is the subject lead uh, for strength and conditioning and is also the course lead for uh, the master in applied uh, strength and conditioning science. Um, and, uh, uh, and Alex is a, a UK SCA uh, accredited, um, uh, so he's accredited by the UK SCA and uh, uh, he works as a strength and conditioning coach uh, in a variety of sports. And uh, Alex has also um, provided support for Olympians and the Paralympians, including uh, medal winners, winners at the uh, Rio 2016 uh, Games. And he's also, he works with the professional uh, athletes as well. Um, Alex is a basis accredited and a re-accredited uh, physiologist. Uh, and is also a chartered uh, scientist, and he's a senior fellow of the Higher Education Academy. And uh, uh, Alex has published um, research on a range uh, of topics, including uh, physics, uh, so including physical pardomy and physiological profiling, performance determinants, talent development, and athlete support. Uh, and uh, um, um, Alex is involved with uh, England golf, British triathlon, British wheelchair basketball, and England athletics. And as I was saying, um, uh, Alex has supervised quite a number of, uh, of MN students. And uh, in particular, um, uh, he's uh, in charge of the studentships at Crystal Palace and uh, Tottenham Court, um, as well, and Tottenham, Tottenham sorry, Hotspur um, FC uh, Football Club as well. And um, uh, in terms of research interest, so Alex's research interests are quite uh, varied. Um, he has a research uh, interest in golf, endurance, cricket, and also other interests. In golf, uh, primarily um, he's interested in training methods in order to improve the club head uh, speed in, uh, to determine um, the performance or to find what the determinants are uh, in terms of uh, for the asset to perform at its best. And he did that on the European tour of, uh, of the golf um, championship. Uh, also is uh, uh, researching poten potentiation strategies. In terms of endurance, uh, is interested in 800 meters and 1500 meters performance determinants, primarily in elite youth. Uh, the physiological profiling I was uh, mentioning earlier, uh, and also um, different training um, uh, techniques and approaches for endurance athletes. And then in terms of cricket, is uh, interested in, uh, in uh, exploring the longitudinal variability in physical performance uh, measures. And then he, uh, he has also other interests in growth and maturation, relative age effects and biobending. And uh, here are just some, uh, a selection of the publications and uh, um, some of them are uh, quite interesting. Uh, this one, I think it was, um, um, I don't remember which one was uh, a, a publication that Alex published along with one of the MRS uh, students. Uh, I think it was this one, but I might, I might be mistaken, but one, one of these is, is, you know, basically it was just the, um, the dissertation of one of our MRS students. But by all means, uh, check this um, uh, publication if you are interested. And if you want to know more about what Alex is doing, so uh, Alex has a profile on ResearchGate uh, or you can see his profile on LinkedIn and you can also contact him through this um, platform or you can uh, follow him via Twitter if you, if you prefer. Um, and then the, the next uh, supervisor is uh, Phil, Phil Price. Uh, let me see if I can get the video working. Oops, sorry. Uh, where am I going? Come on, you should be here. Uh, I think he's just hidden. Let me do it in another way. If I do that, it should come up. Hello, everyone. And thank you, Elizabeth, for letting me present my ideas here. Because I've really been excited to try to use the 
Everest Dreams to tackle this particular line of scientific inquiry. So I run a podcast called The Progress Theory, and for this particular season, we're focusing on hybrid training. So I really want to start developing research in this area to link with the podcast. Well, what is hybrid training? So you might be more familiar with the term concurrent training. So that is when you're trying to develop two separate qualities through your training. So it might be strength and endurance. So usually this is associated with, say, you're doing strength training to improve your running performance. Or you play a sport like rugby or hockey where you need to be both strong and very cardiovascular fit. So you've got to train for both. Hybrid training is slightly different because instead of doing one thing to try and supplement and improve another, with hybrid training, you're both trying to be a weightlifter, for example, and very good at triathlon. So you're trying to compete at two separate sports at the same time, which obviously changes the goals of the training that you actually do, even though there's a lot of similarities between them. And why this is of interest is around this idea that you, if you did train for both strength and endurance, there's something about the endurance training which tries to interfere with your strength adaptations. And they call this the interference effect. Uh, and this was famously put across uh, by the work of Robert Hickson back in the 80s, where he found where if you compared a strength training only group versus a combined group of uh, strength training and endurance training, around the seven week mark, they started to plateau. And then by week 10, as you can see on the slide, they started to uh, decrease. And what we found out since then, we've done a lot more uh, work into what could potentially cause this interference effect. But ultimately, rather than thinking, oh, endurance training is bad for strength adaptations, maybe there's more we can do to try and minimize this actual effect. And this particular graph showcases an overview of what many systematic reviews have found, particularly in the last 10 years. If you get untrained people, you can pretty much do anything to them and they tend to improve in both. Whereas once they become more trained, usually we get similar aerobic improvements. If we had an endurance only versus a current training group, as you can see in the, uh, the train log, which would be in the, uh, on the left hand side, but when it comes to the strength training only versus the concurrent training group, we get this slight difference. And it's still, if you think about it, the concurrent training group is still improving strength, but it's probably not as much if you, if you only did strength on its own. So what could be causing this slight decrease? Or if you think about it a different way, okay, you're training for two separate things rather than one thing on its own. So you're likely not going to get such an improvement in, in one of you just to train on its own. So maybe if we took that into account, we could then uh, program accordingly based on the fact that you know you're going to increase the strength at a slower rate. So I think it's important to try and understand what this interference effect is so that maybe we're doing a lot of stuff with our training, we might be able to reduce its, manipulate them so we reduce its effect. So these interference effects, you'll probably go into a lot more detail, but these are kind of like the areas which may affect it. So you've obviously got fatigue, you've got depletion of substrates, uh, and then you've got the activation of certain molecular pathways. And obviously when it comes to fatigue and the activation of certain pathways, there's a lot of things we can do with training interventions. So it could be the intensity, the volume, or the frequency of your training program, or it could be the type of training you do. There's a lot of research saying that there's going to be a different response if you did running versus cycling. Uh, the session order, if you had two sessions in one day, what happens if you had running in the morning and then weights in the afternoon? What happens if you swap them over? Would you get a different response? And clearly the training history of the athlete, and I think this is a really key one, the training history of the athlete is going to have a different uh, response uh, versus someone that's never trained in that particular exercise domain before. So all of these things affect uh, the interference effect. And no wonder when you've got something so multifactorial, the results coming from the literature aren't always as clear. So this is what I want to investigate, and hopefully with your help. Okay, so ideas that are currently going around in my head are the impact of different forms of fatigue, so that can be peripheral versus central, uh, acute versus chronic, on force production and strength adaptations, different molecular responses as in response to 
different types of training sessions, the impact of training prevention on fatigue and molecular responses to exercise. So, for example, um, if we had uh, an athlete that did a particular session, monitor their fatigue, monitor their molecular response on that session, give them a 10 week training intervention, and then do that exercise session again. Would you get a change in the response from that particular session? You'd like to think so. Um, training sessions, exercise order, there's so many different variables that we can play around here to truly understand what happens to the body uh, when you start to mix endurance and um, strength training. So if you're interested in this area or you have ideas of your own, please do contact me on yeah, Phil Price, Phil Price at samaries.ac.uk. You can find me on Instagram as well at Dr. Phil Price. Uh, please check out my podcast, The the progress theory a bit of a cheap bug there because that's where a lot of these ideas are coming from okay so let me just come out of this one now all right so this was uh was phil uh if you are uh, interested um in what well, you know, in knowing more what, uh, about what phil is doing by all means um feel free to contact him directly uh, and this is uh, uh, Claire, Claire Mulvena. Uh, again, I think uh, she gave me a little video. Hi, my name is Claire Mulvena and I am the course lead for the MSc in Professional Development. I'm just going to have a chat to you today about some of my research interests. So just to start off with, the main focus of my research is on how coaches use performance analysis and the role of performance analysis within applied sport. That's the area that my PhD is in. And it's also the area that I've done my most recent research in. Predominantly, this has focused on football and the use of performance analysis in football. But I've also looked at the role of performance analysis in rugby. And I'm also starting to look at the role of performance analysis in um, sports beyond team sports. I have done other research, however, so I've also looked at what the coach's role is within the motivational climate. And I've also looked at how life skills are developed in PE and in sport more generally. Usually my research focuses on coaches and what the role of the coach is, but a lot of that research is also sat across the PE domain as well. And some recent research that I've done where I've worked with students at St Mary's to get some of their research published has looked at the role of the coach within grassroots sport and also the role of the PE teacher and how PE teachers use specific games-based approaches. Now, if you are keen and looking at doing some research research that falls within any of these areas, please do get in touch and we can arrange a further discussion or we can just have a chat over email. Okay, so this was uh, Claire um, and Claire is uh, um, uh, supervising uh, a, an MRS student uh, at the moment, so one of our, of our current MRS students. MRS students, sorry. Um, and again, uh, if you are interested in knowing more about what Claire is doing, by all means, contact her. She would be uh, quite happy to uh, to chat with you. And then uh, Maeve, um, again, uh, I think this was uh, uh, this one. Yeah. So let me just make it a bit bigger. Oh, sorry, this is too big, and no, I can't see the little button. Hi, my name is Mia Murray. I'm a lecturer within the Department of the Psychology and Pedagogic Science. Uh, my main research areas are in physical education as a former head of PE um, in a secondary school. And this also uh, aligns my real research area into motor confidence, physical activity and health, and laterally more into maturation and working with adolescent population. I also have research interests that really much vary into netball and as well as this I have some um, real background research into psychological skills and strength and conditioning. So I've uploaded some of my current uh, MRES projects as well as my current MSc supervising projects and my previous MRES projects which, which very much align with the research areas. I've also included my teaching and my undergrad um, that I undertake um, in the physical education sport and youth development program as well as our foundation year program. So this really aligns with holistic development, health and well-being, teaching and learning, and, and how we implement that in the coaching and teaching practitioners setting. Uh, I'll take you to use pedagogy so look at how we can use these in teaching and coaching, um, and also where we can really use that in our advancing our practice in teaching and my research um, 
uh, teaching is very much within our proposal and our research project and you'll see in the latter part I um, supervise a number of undergraduate dissertations very much aligned with our research areas. My current research projects that I'm working on external, internal and external to the university very much aligned with our previous research projects. So again, I'm working with Netball Northern Ireland, um, where we're investigating um, and really understanding how we can best implement a new coaching framework for Netball in this area. Um, I'm also working on a project with another member staff where we're looking at the impact of equipment modifications and how we're looking at the impact of that on physical activity. I also work very collaboratively with a group of researchers at Durham to the University where we're looking at voter confidence and uh, how we have different health trajectories um, and also where we're looking at uh, some of the projects we run within the university and how there's an impact and evaluation of these and student engagement. So I've also included some of my research outputs um, and also my conference presentations as well as my undergraduate supervision. So if there's anything you'd like to contact me about or speak further about a potential MRS, um research area, I would be very happy to answer any queries. Thank you very much. Okay, so this was, uh, oops, sorry, this was uh, Mev, and um, uh, Mev is uh, currently supervising a, um, one of the MRS students uh, um, as well this year. Um, so another um, supervisor is uh, uh, Jessica, Jessica Hill. Uh, so Jessie is uh, um, Associate Professor in Applied Sport and Exercise Physiology. Uh, and uh, um, her uh, research interests are primarily in exercise-induced muscle damage and recovery strategies and uh, uh, the female um, athlete. And uh, um, uh, in terms of the muscle damage and, uh, and recovery, uh, so Jess has uh, extensive expertise in this area of, of research, in particular in the area of, uh, of recovery. And these are some examples of, uh, of areas uh, on, on which uh, Jess is uh, uh, currently and actively uh, working uh, and supervising projects, <laughs> pardon me, uh, like recovery strategies to minimize effects of, of EM, EIMD, um, the recovery strategies and the repeated bout effect, interaction between repeated use of recovery strategies and ad adaptation, and the compression garments, cold water immersion, and New Zealand black current. And so um, uh, Jess uh, worked quite a lot on compression garments, um, for example, um, and in terms of the female um, athlete, uh, so um, uh, these are some examples of uh, uh, the current research and also uh, project supervision that uh, Jess is doing in this area. So changes in ovarian hormones throughout the menstrual cycle and effects on performance and recovery, and also the effects of the menstrual cycle phase on lactate threshold and the VO2 uh, max. Uh, and um, again, if uh, you, know, you are interested in knowing more about what uh, Jessica is doing, by all means, feel free to contact her. Uh, she would be uh, uh, very happy to, uh, to talk with you about, uh, about her research and see if um, you know, there is any MRS project uh, that could come out of it. Uh, the next one is Mark. Uh, and again, I think Mark is here. Yeah. So let me create. But I started off my research uh, in my PhD, which I did at the University of Edinburgh uh, several years ago now. And uh, at the time, I was focusing on the physiological responses to repeated sprint activities. So, typical of that that we experience seeing in games like football, rugby, hockey, basketball, uh, these stop and go sports that, that many of us play. And then, uh, more recently, I've, I've been doing a lot of work on caffeine supplementation and looking at the way caffeine affects uh, exercise performance, uh, both sprint based and endurance based, uh, and also how it affects our physiology. Uh, and I published a couple of meta analysis uh, caffeine 
the Thomas Kelly behind the box to get the And the Clinton wants to see if there's a genetic component to the way cancer works with our physiology and exercise as well. Uh, I'm interested in all ways of exercise physiology. Uh, it's almost a quirky and genetic to me. Uh, I like things that are a bit different. And, but yeah, I have found this area of expertise. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and that's me. So, uh, yeah, welcome to St. David's and uh, I hope you enjoy the program. Okay, so this was, uh, uh, was Mark. Oops, sorry. Um, and uh, again, um, if you are interested, by all means, uh, do contact uh, Mark. Um, the next one uh, is uh, Professor Stephen uh, Patterson. Stephen is a professor in applied exercise physiology and performance. And uh, uh, he is uh, currently the director of the Center for Applied Performance, uh, the Research Center, sorry, for Applied Performance Sciences. And uh, um, uh, Stephen is also the course lead uh, for the professional doctorate in strength and conditioning. And some of our MRS students. Uh, they, uh, they go on into PhDs here at St. Mary's, including uh, instruments in conditioning. And the Stevens uh, research fits into two main uh, themes uh, of health and sports uh, performance, with a uh, significant uh, overlap between, uh, between the two. And uh, Stephen works quite a lot with external stakeholders and also with uh, industry uh, partner, um, partners in order to address uh, questions and uh, research that uh, meets obviously the, the need uh, of, uh, of the partners. And his main uh, research uh, focuses, focuses on uh, blood flow restriction training for rehabilitation and performance. Uh, ischemic uh, preconditioning, physiology uh, of team uh, sports, and then the strength training for performance and health. And these are some of the selected uh, publications. Uh, as you can see, there is uh, quite uh, a variety of publications uh, that uh, Stephen has, has authored. Uh, and again, if you are interested uh, or if you want to know more about uh, what Stephen is doing, by all means, uh, do contact him directly. Uh, and then we have Sarah, uh, Sarah Cockley. Uh, Sarah is a senior lecturer in applied sport and exercise physiology. Uh, she is a basis accredited uh, sports physiologist, um, and she is very active uh, in research. And um, Sarah has provided the sports science support uh, to Olympic and Paralympic athletes across a wide range of, of sports. And more recently, uh, Sarah has been involved uh, with a number of quite large projects funded by the UK Ministry uh, of Defence. And Sarah's interests include endurance uh, training, exercise prescription, modelling of endurance performance, load carriage and occup occupational um, performance. And uh, in particular, uh, here are some examples of load carriage performance. Uh, so this is um, about the physiological demand in terms of um, men uh, versus women or different loads, different speeds, different distances covered and so on and so forth. Uh, and also what the effects of different environmental conditions are. And these are uh, two examples of uh, recent uh, publications, uh, this, uh, publications that uh, Sarah has uh, quite recently published. So you see a bit uh, here of a variety of research areas. Another supervisor uh, is uh, Carla, Carla Mijen. Um, so Carla is uh, a registered uh, sport and exercise uh, psychologist, uh, and uh, um, she uh, has uh, um, a, a, a master in social psychology, uh, and uh, then um, she also has a, a PhD in uh, sport psychologies, uh, sport psychology, sorry. And uh, um, the area of research supervision uh, Carla is interested in are primarily endurance uh, performance, 
challenge and stretch states in performance uh, and uh, psyching uh, teams. And then also female health, uh, in particular exploring the psychological fluctuations and coping strategies across the menstrual cycle. And this is an example, uh, sorry, two examples of um, Carla's, uh, no, sorry, uh, four examples, pardon me, of Sarah, uh, of um, Carla, pardon me, uh, publications. And again, if you are interested uh, in knowing more about uh, Carla's um, uh, uh, research and potential projects. Um, she has supervised quite a number of MRS projects uh, in the past. By all means, feel free, feel free to, uh, to contact her. Uh, Stacy is also uh, a, a sport psychologist, Dr. Stacy Winter, uh, and uh, Stacy is a very active um, researcher and she's a senior uh, lecturer in applied sport psychology, and she's a registered sport and exercise psychologist. And uh, um, as I was saying, she's uh, quite active uh, research-wise, and the areas of research supervision and research interest are applied sport psychology, uh, professional practice and development of psychologists, performance interventions, mental health and well-being areas, and the multidisciplinary issues and modes of working. And in terms of the professional practice, uh, she is uh, uh, in particular interested in the factors impacting service delivery, the development of practitioner qualities, and the psychosocial interventions. And these are uh, two examples of uh, Stacy's publications. In terms of the mental health and well being, uh, this is in particular within and outside sport, uh, industry and organizational links, and also she's interested in different populations. And this, again, are some of uh, Stacy's um, area um, publications. Um, and uh, in terms of the interdisciplinary projects, um, so um, uh, Stacy has worked uh, quite uh, extensively um, in many of these uh, multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary projects. Um, and these are uh, two examples of, uh, of publications in those areas. Um, another um, supervisor is uh, Elaine, Elaine uh, Mulali. Um, she, uh, Elaine is uh, um, a sport rehabilitator, so she um, uh, works in sport rehabilitation uh, and she has quite a lot of work experience in NHS, elite level uh, athletes and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, Elaine's um, research interest are um, primarily in um, uh, the female athlete, uh, knee injury uh, prevention in netball, uh, um, and then landing mechanics and injury risks, uh, the menstrual cycle, and um, Elaine uh, is currently um, studying uh, towards her uh, PhD, which is uh, the modification of characteristics associated with non-contact knee injury mechanism in adult recreational netball players. And again, uh, Elaine is quite keen in supervising MRS uh, students. Um, and if you are interested in more um, in, you know, sport rehabilitation um, areas, then Elaine is really the right supervisor for you. Um, and these are some of the publications, uh, Elaine's uh, publications, if you are uh, interested. As you can see, there is quite a variety here. Um, and this is uh, uh, um, Nikki. Uh, yeah, sorry, is this? Hello, my name is Dr. Nicola Brown, and I'm an associate professor here at Oops, sorry. University. I teach on a number of undergraduate and postgraduate programs in the Faculty of Sport and Health and as a prospective MRED student, I'm just recording this short session to give you a bit of background into the areas of research that I do um, and there may be opportunities for potential collaboration when you ask if you want to take your MRES with us and undertake a particular research project. And so just a bit of background about me, as well as teaching at St Mary's University, I'm an active member in the research group of Breast Health at the University of Portsmouth. And you'll see as I talk about my research areas, the types of projects I've worked on in this field. 
I'm also on the executive board of the Women in Sport Exercise Academic Network. Um, and again, you'll see some connections there in terms of my key areas of focus. Talking of which, um, so my key areas are surrounding providing an understanding of the prevalence and impact of female specific health issues, then evaluating strategies to tackle those health issues, and ideally then looking at that next step of how do we actually then translate that information or knowledge to females and also to professionals that are working with that population. Um, so whether that is from a performance perspective, so working with athletes and exercisers, or working with the general population or females with specific health conditions, um, I, I feel there's a, a need to understand more about the issues that females face. Um, and then if we understand those challenges, we can then implement um, strategies to overcome some of those challenges and evaluate what works and as I said then transfer that information to try and improve uh, the health and well-being and performance of females. Um, two key areas um, that I tend to focus on are sort of linked to the menstrual cycle um, whether that is looking at um, puberty um, and the kind of experiences and challenges that that brings uh, when it comes to physical activity participation for um, young athletes, um, right through to you know, perhaps the impact of premenstrual syndrome, um, all the way through to menopause and the experiences and challenges that that might bring in different, um, different aspects of life, whether it's a barrier to exercise or influences women within the workplace. Um, and as I mentioned, the other area of interest is breast health, which I'll talk a little bit more on the next slide. And um, so when I say breast health, people often assume that that's focused on breast cancer, but actually I focus more on how the breast moves during physical activity and the consequences of that movement. Um, so one of those is um, movement related nostalgia or breast pain, um, which is commonly experienced by women um, and elite athletes. Um, another potential consequence of that movement is breast ptosis or breast sag. Um, so if that repeated movement of the breast, if it's not supported correctly, it can lead to damaging of the uh, supporting structures of the breast. And our research has identified that this breast movement can be a barrier to physical activity. So one in five adult women and nearly half of adolescent girls say that they stop participating in sport because of their breasts. And lastly, that, that changes in breast movement, and if we change the level of breast support that a female wears, um, we, we see changes in their functional movement, um, so in fact changes in their stride length or in their movement patterns, and even in some physiological variables. That's the kind of area that um, I've looked into. A potential solution to this is a sports bra. Um, hopefully if this video plays, you'll see this is the movement that I'm referring to. So if female is exercising, we can see that breast movement there um, and we can see the kind of strain and the, how this can lead to those challenges that I've just talked about. Um, if we look at this lower video, we can see now that when we're exercising in appropriately fitted breast support, such as a sports bra, we've really reduced and controlled that movement. Uh, but the challenge here is that sports bra use is quite low amongst many populations. And additionally, many women wear the wrong size bra and experience different bra fit issues and more you know, uh, challenges with their bra. So there's a lot to do um, in terms of education to try and improve people's knowledge of breast support, um, how to identify what appropriate breast support is, and also how to make sure that their bra fits correctly. Um, so that's the main field that I work in. Um, and for me, education is the, the main area. Um, as I think that's a key strategy to try and reduce some of these negative consequences of breast movement. So just to give you a flavour of some of the previous projects that I've supervised or been part of, um, one was surrounding the development and evaluation of breast education resources for adolescent girls. And um, so this has resulted in a, in a project called Treasure Your Chest, which are breast education resources that are now free for schools to download and deliver to their female students in, in a school setting and for the coaches working with youth athletes. Um, so this stemmed from original research which identified the challenges that girls faced with their breasts during sport and activity 
so understanding what they were worried about what they wanted to learn more about and then we developed those resources evaluated how they effective they were at increasing breast knowledge knowledge and increasing confidence to talk about breasts and then we delivered the intervention and evaluated it with thousands of girls um, to establish its effectiveness um, i think there's scope here to look to develop both that breast education research even further looking at other delivery models and perhaps looking at education in other populations so whether that is for health professionals that work with women with breast pain, what is their knowledge and understanding of, of correct bra fit, which is often prescribed as a method um, to, to deal with breast pain, but we don't know what health professionals' knowledge is of correct bra fit, um, or working with individuals that have undergone um, surgical procedures to the breast and about their bra fit challenges. How do we learn more about the issues that they face so that we can support them more effectively? Um, another study that um, I found really interesting was around, around breast pain and bra fit issues in marathon runners. Um, this was a survey of nearly 1,300 marathon runners um, to establish the kind of issues and um, challenges that they face. Um, and again, I think there's many other population groups that we, we need to learn more about to understand the breast support needs within different sports. Um, on a slightly different approach, um, I've looked more about um, sort of from a media perspective about how girls magazines talk about breasts, about how they're represented. Um, from a wider perspective, looking at the representation of female sport and female specific um, health issues within the media and how about breaking down that, that taboo of some of those issues that we are starting to talk about more freely. Um, a more um, sort of, I don't want to say generic, but just looking at the sort of barriers and motivators to physical activity in young and middle aged women, and um, just trying to gain a wider understanding of the issues that women face. A more recent project I've been involved with is looking at experience of menopause in the workplace. So, through qualitative interviews with women, um, trying to understand their the issues that they face in their work setting um, and looking at the challenges that they face and what strategies they feel are needed to uh, try and overcome those issues. And finally, um, the effect of dietary patterns on the symptoms of premenstrual syndrome. Um, so looking at more from a, a nutritional perspective, um, how, how does our nutrition potentially impact symptoms that we um, experience during the menstrual cycle? So that just gives you a bit of an overview of some of the key areas um, that I focus on and that I've supervised over the years. So if you think any of those are of interest to you, if you're particularly interested in women in sport and about female athlete performance um, or female health in general, um, then I'd be more than happy to, to have a chat with you. Um, my email's on the slide there. Um, if you wanted to discuss any potential project ideas uh, before registering on the MRS programme, um, yeah, feel free to get in touch. Okay, so this was, uh, um, oops, let me just do that. Uh, this was Nikki. Uh, oh, wrong. Um, and uh, um, again, if you are interested, by all means, uh, do contact uh, Nikki. Um, so the, uh, the next one, the next supervisor is, oops, sorry, uh, this is uh, not what I wanted. Uh, the next supervisor uh, is, um, sorry, I can't, uh, can't see her uh, properly. Let me do that. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Captain Uncle Kreiger and uh, I want to share a bit of about myself and, and my research interests. So I'm a lecturer in sports rehabilitation at St. Mary's University. I have a sort of mixed background in terms of uh, a bachelor's in sports rehabilitation, uh, a master's from France in biomedical engineering, and a PhD from Loughborough in sports technology, where I focused on uh, football boot designing and testing. Um, as well as working at St. Mary's, I also have a few other roles. So I'm an honorary lecturer in sports and exercise medicine at Queen Mary University where I lead um, the football medicine elements. I am um, part of the Fitness for Football advisory group at UEFA, where I uh, act as a women's football expert. And I'm a member of the Steering Women's Football Research Group at uh, FIFA. 
I do a lot of football related research, as you'll see shortly, and uh, these are some of the key collaborations on the right hand side. So, as you can see, I try to do most of my research in collaboration with the people in the field to make sure I maximize the impact of the research. So, uh, as you can see, this is both um, top um, women's Premier League and women's Super League teams. Uh, it is um, Aspital, which is a leading uh, medical hospital for sports injuries, um, football boot companies, and the ECA, which is the European Club Association. So here are some of the key research areas I focus on. Um, the first one is the steering women's football research. And I've highlighted some of my key publications here. Um, as you can see, my research very much focuses on identifying how much we know, uh, where the gaps are, and what we need to know to improve uh, how we evidence-based um, women's football across a broad spectrum, so how we make women's football better through research. One of those areas includes menstrual cycle, its impacts and barriers. Well, we've had some research uh, going on um, both at amateur and elite level in the UK, focusing on players' perceived uh, barriers and perceived impact of the menstrual cycle on football and how that impacts their willingness to play, their performance on the pitch, uh, how they recover afterwards, etc. And then I've been um, supporting a lot of research going on in the concussion um, field. Um, this is very much focused on uh, the knowledge, attitude and behaviour, so how we, we act around concussion in, in elite football, and this is both at men's and women's side. Uh, we've done some research at elite men's and elite women's football um, here in the UK, and we have an ongoing um, project with FIFA where we are assessing these factors of the knowledge, the attitude and the behaviour around concussion, uh, in people going to the World Cup as referees, as medical staff, and may potentially also include um, the media attending uh, the World Cup. So this is an area of interest that I have, and I think it is um, very important uh, to understand you know, how this knowledge that we have is actually implemented and uh, adapted by the people in the field. Um, then, of course, uh, I work um, on football boot research. So my PhD and a lot of research I've done so far is focused on men and optimizing football boot design for men in terms of performance and also minimizing or balancing that, uh, the performance with injury risk. Uh, it has taken a turn and now also focusing very much on designing football boots for women how we should amend the football boot once it's on the market, as we currently don't have any, um, and as well as uh, understanding how we optimise football boot designs for young players, which is a highly neglected um, area in the, in the design process uh, of football boots. Then, uh, I have done research on sort of football medicine from a broader perspective. Uh, this includes things like acute chronic workload ratios, understanding risk factors and the balance between what people think is a risk factor and what we know from research is a risk factor. So understanding what medical staff do and think versus what is actually available in the literature. I've also supported other research, which is not mentioned here, um, on things like MRI scans, and um, um, and um, like uh, painkillers and the use of painkillers in elite uh, football use slash abuse and when and when you shouldn't take it. So uh, this is where I go in and sort of support medical staff in areas that they find uh, are troublesome, and we try to sort of address it from a research perspective. Okay, so that was a brief overview of my broad slash narrow uh, research interest within football. Uh, if any of this um, has, has sparked your attention, 
and you want to hear more, ask questions, then do feel free to contact me. Here's my Twitter and my email. And so feel free to reach out if you have any questions or any interest in the research areas that I've just mentioned. Thank you for listening, and I hope to hear from you. Okay, so this was, uh, oops, sorry. Um, uh, Ka oh, Kat, uh, where am I? Here we go. Um, and uh, uh, the next um, uh, supervisor that I want uh, uh, to introduce to you, oops, sorry, I can't see properly, let me just do that one second. Um, oops, sorry. Um, let me just share my screen again with you. Come on. Ah, here we go. Uh, it is this one. Now I can see it properly. Hello, everybody. My name is Magali Chilhan, and I would like to talk about my research interest here for the Masters by Research. I'm a senior lecturer in nutrition at St. Mary's University. My main research interest is in the health benefits of bioactive compounds in plant foods. And this is what I spent my career focusing on and researching. I more specifically would welcome research topics on the health effects of bioactive compounds in plant foods, more specifically culinary herbs and spices, which is what I've spent a fair bit of my time researching, or the health benefits or the health effects of functional foods, so more specifically that contain plants. I'm especially passionate about um, herbs and spices or their extracts if we want to study turmeric. A lot of us are going to be looking at the most bioactive compounds in turmeric, which is curcumin. So in terms of applications, I'm more specifically interested in their impact or these plant extracts impact or effects on inflammation reaction as well as antioxidant reactions, uh, perceived stress, so self-measured stress levels, anxiety, different elements around mood, as well as cognition, um, sleep duration and sleep quality. And uh, I'm also interested in migraines and the impact of those on migraines. So uh, I have some publications here that I place for you to do further reading if you're interested. So if you would like to contact me to discuss this further, here is my email. Please do not hesitate to ask. I am very open to listening to your own ideas. It's very exciting when the students have their own ideas. It helps with the dedication in the topic. So email me and ask. Uh, all the best with your studies and your research. So that's it for me today. Bye. Okay, so this was uh, uh, Magali. So uh, again, if you are um, interested in uh, discussing with Magali, um, just you know, uh, you can send me an email, and I can uh, will be delighted to put you in contact uh, with Magali. Um, and then uh, again on on the health area, uh, there is uh, Irini. Uh, oops, sorry, uh, and uh, uh, this is Hirini uh, presentation. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Irene Hiladisi, um, and uh, I am a senior lecturer in nutrition and course lead for the MSc Public Health Business Learning here at St. Mary's University. My background is in human nutrition and dietetics. Um, and I pulled an MSc from the University of Aberdeen on um, human nutrition and metabolism, and a PhD from the University of East Anglia, um, where I explored uh, the associations between different diet quality patterns uh, and scores um, and different uh, macro and micronutrients, micronutrient intakes with inflammation and sarcopenia in a wide range of um, age ranges in women from the 20k cohort. Uh, so um, my current research interests, um, um, since I did my PhD, of course, have 
involved. And uh, currently, I'm looking at understanding the importance of nutrition and lifestyle interventions with human health, well being, disease prevention, and aging. Also, I'm very interested in looking at life cycle, uh, nutrition and lifestyle interventions and observational um, associations as well. Most recently, I have become um, very interested in looking at the determinants of health inequalities and chronic diseases in minority ethnic groups. So this has led to um, have um, a number of PhD students that I supervise at St. Mary's University with colleagues from different disciplines. So um, I will uh, present you some of the topics that currently my PhD students are working on. And of course, if you are interested to work on any of these topics or related topics, please um, do uh, don't hesitate to contact me directly. So um, my PhD students are looking at the effectiveness of counseling on attitudes, behaviors, and weight control among women in Black African minority groups in the UK. Uh, and uh, another student is looking at the assessment of the nutritional requirements of master endurance athletes, um, which hopefully uh, this work will inform the design of a specifically tailored nutrition educational intervention program. My other PhD student is looking at the exploration into the evidence base, experience and practices concerning mental health and well-being among brain populations displaying health inequalities. I've also got another student looking at the evaluation of the effectiveness of mindfulness interventions on physiological and psychological outcomes in UK women with polycystic uh, ovarian syndrome. And um, my other PhD student is looking at an exploration in weight cycling within South Asian populations in the UK. So as I said, uh, again, uh, please do not hesitate to contact me directly um, if you are interested in any of these areas, uh, or even if you would like to explore any research ideas, or if you have any questions um, uh, that you would like to, to uh, talk through. Um, and um, here is my email address. Do not hesitate to, to get in touch, um, and uh, we can discuss further. Uh, so I welcome. Uh, and I'm very much looking forward uh, to your emails. Thank you very much for listening. Okay, so this was uh, Irini. And last but not the least, uh, Kiriaki. So I mentioned Kiriaki um, at, um, at the beginning, uh, but she also uh, uh, made a, a short video that I'm going to share with you. and I'm a senior lecturer in nutrition and health and exercise science at St. Mary's University. Uh, my background is in psychology as I obtained a PhD in psychology from the University of Leeds in 2009 and then I continued with the Master's by Research and PhD I completed in 2016 and I was looking at the psychological part of that can predict weight loss and weight loss maintenance in these uh, individuals. Uh, I've got a broad range of research interests, but mainly I'm interested in the health related topics. Uh, as I said, my background is in psychology, so anything related to health and or nutrition related research topic I would be interested to discuss with you. I'm currently involved in a collaborative uh, research project looking at the effects of the dietary supplement on children with potential deficit hyperactivity disorder. But I would be interested in any uh, topics where we'll looking at the effects of functional models on physiological and psychological outcomes in children or adults, or uh, the effects of any intervention, lifestyle, or mindfulness interventions on obesity and other health-related issues. 
So this was uh, Kiriaki. And uh, so this is really what I wanted just to share um, uh, with you. I wanted just to, uh, you know, to kind of give you a bit of an idea, an overview uh, of the type of supervision, um, the type of, uh, um, uh, you know, of, of projects, uh, of research also that you might um, be able to, uh, to undertake as part of the MRS. And I thought, that uh, hearing uh, from uh, you know the the mouth and the voice of the supervisors what they are doing and what uh, they would like to uh, you know to do with you if you if you want uh, to work with them uh, I thought it was uh, the best the best way. Anyway, if you want to know more um, about the program, so this is my email address. By all means, uh, uh, send me an email. I will be absolutely uh, delighted uh, to uh, talk with you uh, more about either your ideas, uh, ideas for projects, or just, uh, you know, if you want to know more about the, the program itself, or you can contact Jamie, Jamie North. Um, so let me just um, stop the sharing now. Thank you very much for, uh, for you know, listening, for uh, being here um, with me, and uh, I hope to see you soon here at the Maris. If you need anything, if you uh, want to ask any question, by all means, just, uh, just ask. Thank you very much for, for listening and good evening. <laughs>